friends welcome to yet another chapter from class 11th chemistry today we shall start with class 11th chemistry chapter 3 classification of elements and periodicity in properties this is the first lecture of this chapter in this lecture we shall discuss historical development of periodic table in the second lecture we shall discuss modern periodic table in third lecture we shall discuss electronic configuration and types of elements in which we shall discuss that how the elements are arranged in s p d and f blocks of the table fourth periodic trends in physical properties of elements and finally in the fifth lecture we shall discuss periodic trends in chemical properties of the elements so welcome to the series first of all let's see the reason that why do we need to classify the elements so first of all i would like to give you few facts and figures in the year 1800 31 elements were known to us but by the year 1865 the number doubled by year 1865 we, uh, we knew 63 elements and at present in this current year we know 118 elements so here you can see that the number of elements was increasing at a very fast pace thus the scientists found it very difficult to study each element individually so if someone tells you to study 118 elements individually then you can see that how tough it would be to study it it would be almost impossible so scientists started classifying the elements this means that the elements with similar properties were put in the same group and elements with different properties were put in different different groups now this systematic classification of elements is called the periodic table so as this video is on the history of periodic table so let's discuss evolution of periodic classification so how the periodic table evolved So the first attempt to classify elements was done by Johann Dobereynier in early 1800s. Johann Dobereynier was a German chemist and he gave the famous law of triads and this is also called Dobereynier's triads. Now let's understand more about Dobereynier's triads. So the meaning of the word triad is 3. So what Dobereynier did that he arranged the elements with similar properties into groups of 3 into triads so let's understand this with the help of an example so let's see uh, let's see the example of a triad abc so these are three elements with similar properties and they have been put in the same group in the same triad now the law of triads said uh, says uh, says that atomic weight of the middle element is equals to the mean of the atomic weights of the other two elements so in this case you can see that the middle element is element b so atomic weight of b will be equal to atomic weight of a plus c divided by 2 so here i am showing you the list of all the triads now let's take one such triad and that is lithium sodium and potassium that is li na and k now atomic weight of lithium is 7 of sodium is 23 and of potassium is 39 so let's see whether the law of triads is applicable for this or not so here you can see that the middle element is sodium that is na and its atomic weight is 23 so atomic weight of sodium should be equal to mean of atomic weights of lithium and potassium that is 23 must be equal to 39 plus 7 by 2 so if you solve this then you will get that 39 plus 7 is 46 and 46 by 2 is 23 so here you can see that both the sides of equation are the same this means that atomic weight of sodium is equal to atomic weight of lithium uh, the mean of atomic weights of lithium and potassium 
but this law of triads also had a very important limitation it had a very important drawback and that is that very few elements followed dobereniers law of triads so there were only three or four pairs which of elements which fo followed this law the other elements did not follow this law so this means that this law is not true this law is not applicable hence dobereniers law of triads failed now let's see that what was the next law which was given now the second major attempt to classify the elements was done by newlands in 1865 newlands arranged the elements in increasing order of their atomic weights and when he did so he observed that every eighth element had properties similar to the first element and he compared this property to this property of music so he said that just like every eighth new note in music resembles the first note similarly every eighth element had properties similar to the first element so in music if you see that the first note is sa and then there is sa re ga ma pa dha ni and again sa so you can see that sa is the first note as well as the eighth note of music so newland was a very playful person and when he observed the, uh, the notes of music then amazingly he found the law of octaves the meaning of the word octaves is eight so this means law of octaves says that every eighth element will have properties similar to the first element when the elements are arranged in increasing order of their atomic weights now here i am showing you that how newlands classified the elements in his periodic table now in this table you can see that lithium is the first element and sodium is the eighth element and we know that both of them have similar properties both of them are alkali metals so this in this way newlands law of octaves was proved correct similarly beryllium is the second element and magnesium is the ninth element again uh, they have difference of 8 and again their properties are same so this means that every eighth element will have properties similar to the first element you can put this to any element in this table and you will find that its properties are similar to the eighth element but now newland's law of octaves has a very important limitation again that's why this law failed this law was not applicable for elements after calcium so all the elements which came after calcium they did not follow this law only the elements before calcium followed this law so this means that this law is also not universal and that's why we need another law now the next scientist who gave his periodic table was lothar meyer and he was a german chemist he plotted a graph of elements and while doing so he took two things atomic volume of the elements and atomic weight of the elements so he made a graph a, a graph of atomic volume versus atomic weight and let's see at what were his observations now when luther meyer plotted the graph he obtained a periodically repeated pattern so in this graph you can see that on the peaks there are elements like sodium potassium and rubidium similarly on the descending slope there are magnesium calcium and strontium on the ascending slope there are fluorine chlorine and bromine so this means that the elements at the same position of the curves had similar properties because we know that all the elements at the peak that are sodium potassium and rubidium they are they have similar properties and they are the alkali metals they are the group 1 metals similarly all the elements on descending slope are alkaline earth metals magnesium calcium and strontium and again they have similar properties similarly the elements like fluorine chlorine and bromine which are on the ascending slope they have, they also have similar properties and they are called halogens 
This means that elements at similar position of the curves have similar properties. So on the basis of this graph, Lothar Mayer made a table of elements. But unfortunately, his work was not published until the work of Mendeleev. Hence, the credit for development of periodic table goes to Mendeleev. But originally, Lothar Mayer also made the, made the periodic table at the same time. But still, the credit goes to Mendeleev. Because his work was published first. So let's see what was Mendeleev's periodic table. So Mendeleev arranged the elements in horizontal rows and vertical columns. In order of their increasing atomic weights. So element with lowest atomic mass was placed the first. And similarly in order of increasing atomic weights the rest of the elements were placed. Now in Mendeleev's table, the elements with similar properties occupied the same column or group. So this was another interesting fact of Mendeleev's periodic table. That the elements with similar properties occupied same group or same column. And on the basis of this observation, Mendeleev gave his periodic law. This law says that the properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic weights. So this means that atomic weight is an important factor which determines the properties of elements. Now Mendeleev's table was published in 1905. So let's see few special features of Mendeleev's table. So sometimes Mendeleev ignored the order of atomic weights and placed the elements with same properties together. So sometimes even if two elements uh, were having same properties, then Mendeleev gave more importance to that fact and ignored the order of atomic weights. Let's understand this with the help of an example. So for example, iodine has lower atomic weight than tellurium and should be placed in group 6 before tellurium because it has lower atomic weight than tellurium. But however, Mendeleev placed iodine in group 7 after tellurium because iodine has similar properties like fluorine, chlorine and bromine and thus it was placed in the same group with them. And in this way, Mendeleev ignored the order of atomic weights. Another important fact of Mendeleev's table was that he left few gaps in his table for undiscovered elements. So he predicted before itself that after some time few elements, new elements will be discovered and he left few gaps for them. For example, gallium and germanium were unknown at that time. Therefore, Mendeleev left a gap below aluminium and silicon and called these elements Eka aluminium and Eka silicon. And now, if we see that Eka aluminium and Eka silicon have similar properties like gallium and germanium. So in this way, Mendeleev predicted the properties of undiscovered elements before itself. So these were few important features of Mendeleev's table. Now let's see drawbacks of Mendeleev's table. So the major drawbacks of Mendeleev's table were that he was unable to define a special position for hydrogen. So as you know that hydrogen has properties similar to metals as well as non-metals. So Mendeleev was unable to give a definite position for hydrogen. And also there was no place for isotopes of the elements in Mendeleev's shape. And sometimes the uh, periodic law was violated. So Mendeleev's periodic law said that the properties of elements are periodic function of atomic weight. But as I have told you before that sometimes Mendeleev ignored the atomic weight and placed the elements in different order. So due to all these three drawbacks, Mendeleev's table was also not very successful. Hence, the current periodic table, the modern periodic table was developed. We shall study all about modern periodic table in the next lecture. Stay tuned.